Okay, so we've got a really cold day, quite a bit of breeze coming through as well, but well, I'm out flying, so I'm quite happy. I've uh, got this little one to uh, review, and I'll run through the transmitter in a minute, but I'm, I'm quite impressed with the way it's all laid out, first of all. We've got uh, a nice little folding drone here. It's still going to be quite a size, as you can sort of see, but it would fit in a bag or anything, and might possibly fit in a sort of big jacket pocket, I would say, but uh, more of a bag sort of size thing. It uh, folds out quite nicely. It clicks into position, uh, and then you've got release uh, points here. Uh, it's got a little arrow saying press, and then you press that, and it just pushes the spigot to release the arm so you can fold it back in. Uh, you fold the front one, uh, the back ones out first of all, then the front ones and obviously the reverse when you put it in. And it does, it has got that look of, um, uh, somebody on the channel called it the dead cat look. Uh, it looks like it's been run over and it does the, the arms come right the way round sort of thing where you'd expect them to sort of stop there but they, they definitely do come all the way round there. The uh, landing gear is all built in, which I quite like actually, it's quite a nice style and I'm, got, I'm not putting an extra camera on the bottom here or anything so I'm just going to leave it like that because that will land no problem at all and you've got the um, covers for the lights anyway. Weirdly they've put red at the front and blue at the back, seems to be a, a Chinese thing with lighting, perhaps their cars have red lights or, or have blue lights at the back or something, I, I don't know, uh, I would prefer red at the back, it makes sense I think. Uh, but the extended landing gear, uh, which is like I say all built on, is sort of spring loaded and you just pop it out so then looks more like a, a normal drone I would say, but I'm sure if it will take the weight I might put a little uh, small camera in there, uh, probably give us a lot better quality than this one. Uh, I'll put down, uh, I'll show you the live footage from it and I'll put down the spec of what the camera is when we're actually flying it and having a look, but I, it doesn't look like it's going to be an awful lot and it is a budget quad you know it's a nice little lightweight quad um, hopefully good for beginners uh, there's no prop guards with it you do get an extra set of uh, spare props and the props are really flexible as you can hopefully see there um, so I don't really think they're going to actually damage anything if they hit anything but I wouldn't suggest you hit it with anything into the battery bay area and there's quite a little bit of room in here and nice to see that it's got a JST connector because there's loads of them around and it's uh, 850 milliamp hour single cell and like I say, there's a little bit extra room in there. You could get a slightly bigger battery in, I think. I shall have a play with that when I get back indoors. Uh, and you can buy loads of these. You can get like six of these and a multi-charger for about a tenner or, or five for a tenner or something or other. So they're, they're quite cheap and nice to have a whole load with you. And you charge them all up at once, which is, which is good sort of thing. And hopefully it's not a heavy quad, so with an 850 milliamp hour uh, battery, we should get good uh, flight length time. So. Okay, so that's the quad all dealt with. I've already charged the battery up, so uh, I'm out to fly and I can feel spots of rain just on the back of me. So <laughs> this, this might be done at a later time, so let's just pop that all back together. There we go, and it does all sit in there pretty good. Like I say, it's sort of, it's got a, it, it's a budget quad, uh, but it feels okay. It's sort of got a little, you know, a nice little presence to it, I think. You can turn it on and off up here, so just simply press that, and as you can see, the LEDs aren't bad, actually. The, the, you are going to be able to see them, I think. I'm just going to turn that off for a second and run through the transmitter. So we've got a Wi-Fi system on it. It does have a micro SD card slot there, but uh, there isn't the actual... Uh, mechanism inside or any of the electronics to actually hold that in there so we're only going to store back onto our phone I'm going to close that back down like I said and I'm going to fly it like that I think it's it looks a bit better to be honest if you're new to flying I would fly it just as it is if this is your beginner quad this is the first one you're going to start with just fly it with the transmitter don't bother with a uh, phone uh, learn to fly and then add the phone. Uh, that's the way I would do it anyway. Love the transmitter, obviously, in black and orange, Tigger RC colours, and its altitude hold as well. The sticks, I mean, it's a toy grade transmitter, so the sticks don't don't feel particularly great, uh, but you can either pinch with them or thumb with them, absolutely fine. The controls are all marked on the front face, but not on these two top ones here, unfortunately. Uh, you've got your on-off here, You've got your throttle on this side, so it's a mode two, so you literally push that up, the, the quad will go up, pull it down, it'll come down. If you want it to pirouette on the spot, you push this to the right, and that's called yaw in, it'll yaw to the right, yaw to the left, and then this is your direction stick. So the front of the quad is forward, so you push, in, push forward there, the, the camera basically is going forward, um, and then backwards, and then rolls to the right and rolls to the left. When you're going forward and backwards, that's called pitching. 
Uh, and if you learn the terms when you're chatting to anyone who can fly, they'll understand exactly what you're talking about. The other functions on here, we've got uh, this adjusts the trim. If it's not flying correctly, uh, it keeps drifting in one way and you're in a still air environment, uh, so either indoors or a very calm day, you can adjust the trim on this. But there is a calibration method on this one. I'll show you that when we actually get going. I'll calibrate it before we take off. These ones are all nice and clearly marked. So where I was explaining how uh, to fly normally, uh, this one also has a headless mode as well. So And this changes the attributes of this stick here. So if we press this one, it goes into headless mode. And no matter what orientation the quad is in, if this is the way we bound up to it, forward is always away from me. No matter how the quad's facing, backwards towards me, right and left. And that's called headless mode. I don't recommend you flying that, but some people it's there and some people like it. Uh, you've got a uh, return to home button here. It won't actually come back home. It will just come generally back towards you. Uh, and I'll show you that as we get up in the flight. The uh, taking photos and the video buttons don't work because we don't have the micro SD uh, card in this model. Uh, but they probably do one with that. You probably don't get the Wi-Fi then. And then you've got to start the motors. You press here and you put them into idle and then to to take off you give it a bit of throttle and then to land you simply press this and then you can control where it's going to land it will just gradually descend so we've got an emergency stop button here press that and it'll just kill the motors like that so it'll literally drop out of the sky so and i'll show you that as we go through and these two buttons that aren't marked at the top you've got alters the speed here and it's got three different speed rates so in low rates it'll have a little bit of pitch forward uh, in medium it will come a little bit further and in high rates it will come even further over so it just increases the speed of the actual quad and this one here is your flip button you press this and then you choose a direction forward backwards right or left and it will just do it a quick flip itself if you want to put the uh, phone on which obviously uh, like me I, I, would, I would fly it with it but if you're new to flying like I say don't <laughs> just learn to fly it's great fun actually uh, that simply swaps over nice little uh, design actually this this is quite comfortable in the hand it's sort of a, a standard uh, copy design I would say but it's got the uh, handhold bits around the back there so it's nice and comfortable feels good in the hand you need four uh, AA batteries with it as well and it doesn't come with that for the transmitter so that's everything run through. I'm just going to pop my phone in here and then we'll uh, get ready for the flight. So and that works quite well as well and you can adjust the angle of that as well. So you can put it to where you're comfortable with it. So I'm going to put my phone on and then what we do is on this particular model you turn the quad on first of all. So the quad's all working. Actually I'll come down low here and then you'll see what's going to happen when we start binding up and everything. So uh, you get flashing LEDs on the quad that's basically ready uh, waiting to, to bind. Simply turn the transmitter on, get a beep beep off it. So the LEDs have stopped and then we simply go up and down on the throttle. It goes beep beep and then we're actually bound. So a bit confusing that these stop uh, flashing and it's not actually bound to the transmitter. And then the, the quad will have set up a Wi-Fi hotspot. So what we're going to do is go into our Wi-Fi settings on our phone and then we're going to connect up to it, uh, BSL, CAM, and then be some numbers behind it. Connect up to that. And then the actual app that they use is called VS underscore UFO. So we just go on to that. You get a warning up that there's no internet access, uh, which is quite normal. The quad set up a Wi-Fi hotspot and we've just logged on to it. That's, that's all it is. So you don't need to be near a, any other Wi-Fi hotspot. And you don't need to, uh, it's not going to use up your data roaming or anything like that. Simply press play, and there we go, we're live. So, and it's upside down. <laughs> That's different. It wasn't like that earlier when I tested it indoors. <laughs> okay, so we can press reverse here, and it will flick it up the right way. <laughs> I must have pressed the button earlier. That's quite funny, actually. I was thinking, oh, we're going to fly inverted. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, I've done a video on how to fly using an app and uh, I'll put a link down in the description for you but basically all I'm going to use this for a little bit of seeing what the quad what's in front of the quad basically it's called FPV which is first person view uh, and then we've got the camera controls here so we record video here and take still shots here and it's not a particularly wide angle lens as you can see so I'll look with my camera my head cam uh, and, and look how much I'm getting in of the uh, shed and then you'll see how much this is only just about getting the shed in and there is a lot of jello happening there but you would expect that at this level of quad okay to calibrate the gyros you simply pull both the sticks down and to the right 
and then you get the flashing LEDs and that means it's calibrated. Don't move it while you're doing it and like I say make sure it's on somewhere level. I'm going to have to launch this not there because the props are just going to clip that so I'll just pop that up there and we're off so I'm going to start the motors and then you'll see how we get on. It's starting low rates. Yeah, that seems to fly all right. Yes, it does have altitude hold. The, the stick's slightly loose, actually. So I was wondering whether it didn't actually have altitude hold, but if I let go of the stick, it is holding altitude there. Actually, the Wi-Fi isn't bad. It is just a quite a narrow field of view. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to go over here and fly, I think. Whoa, that weather's coming in. Why not make a whole flight here? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the wind's picking up quite a bit. This is flying all right, actually. So in low rates, it's not got a lot of go in it. But it's fine, for what it is. A little bit of... Uh, <laughs> I blame the deer for that if I clip the trees. Note to self. <laughs> so I'm going to pop it up into intermediate rates. Oh wow, it's quite a bit more, actually. It's actually got a little bit of go in it. Yeah, it really has. Yeah, it's quite nice actually. I don't know why, I wasn't really expecting that much from it to be honest, being a little... I don't know, it's a cheap quad. So. I'm going to try a flip. Wee, that flip's pretty good actually. <laughs> Way forwards and backwards. So. And I'm just getting, the wind is really starting to catch us now. I'm going to pop it up into high rates and just give it a quick run up the garden. So I know, way that actual... It does get a shift on. That's actually 50 metres there. No problem whatsoever. And the Wi-Fi is just still holding, actually. So with those LEDs, I should be able to turn it round. Yep, there we go. The Wi-Fi is not, re not really good enough to sort of fly on it fully. But actually, that uh, pitch and everything, oh, see, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's nice. Way that really gets a bit of a shift on. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> pretty good. Okay, I'll show you the return to home. I'll just spin it around a bit. And we'll just bring it to there. And return to home was, as you saw, it was over there. and took off from the bench. So I'm going to press return to home. And it's just going to come over that way. <laughs> Randomly, nowhere near where I bound it or anything else sort of thing. We're drifting around, but that's the breeze that's catching that. Because no matter what orientation I put the quad in, it's just going off in that direction. So I'm going to put it into headless mode, so we get flashing LEDs, get a couple of little beeps off the transmitter, and then left is to the left, let's just get it, so right's there, left's there, that's it, and back towards me, so this is where we're set up, so no matter what angle the quad's facing, it's facing towards me, if I push it forward it's going away from me, pull it back towards me, and then go right and left, and the LEDs will keep flashing until you uh, press the stop, there we go. Let's just go and do a quick selfie. I think yeah, that looked... The breeze is blowing that way, so it might well just drift off for us. That's yeah, alright, actually. Okay, let's just stop that. Yep. Whoops. Oh, it's still in high rates. That's why I'm having a job. There we go. You got the idea. That's it. You don't get a beep from it when it's actually uh, going back into uh, it's a shooting video. <laughs> I actually quite enjoying this. <laughs> I'm flying. I quite enjoy anything to do with flying, to be perfectly honest. Okay. So we've got the um, landing. I, mean, I never understand these on these, so I press it to land. There we go. Oh, it's not even coming into land. So. Oh, paying no attention. Oh, there we go. I think it is coming in. It's all doing its own thing. Very, very lethargic land. And you can still control where it's going to go with that. And then start the motors again. Up we go again. But that's the same as just pulling the throttle off. It's, it's exactly the same process, so I, I never understand them. So if I pull the throttle off, just keep the throttle off for a couple of seconds. Once it realises it's not going down anymore, it'll kill the motors. So. 
I never do understand why they do that. If you were in long grass, uh, like the grass is long, but it's um, reasonable here, uh, I, I would just put that up because you're not going to get any dirt or anything into the motor area. But it's actually well shielded and well covered. But you can see there now we're sat on the grass, so it's not going to be a problem. Because the other thing is you could uh, hand launch as well and hand catch like I just did. It's actually quite a nippy little fun thing, to be honest. Yay! <laughs> Uh, it's got more pitch than it's got acceleration. Oh no, it could just about hold. <laughs> hey, hey, this thing's actually fun. Well, I tell you what, if it didn't have altitude holding it, it'd be even more fun. I'd be able to do flips with it. No, I can't flip it. <laughs> not with altitude hold. I'm, I'm talking about manual flipping, sorry, not uh, not flipping with the button. The um, It doesn't descend very quickly, which is very normal with toy grade altitude hold and it hasn't got a lot of kick out in it. It's a toy grade thing, it's cheap, what do you expect? So I'm gonna give it full kick out. It's not bad, I've had worse. <laughs> it really does look like a squash cat out there. <laughs> God, and that's me just fully off on the throttle. And this is, I find, a lot of people when they're new to flying, they, what they first thing they do is take the quad up. That's a really dodgy thing to do because look at this, I'm full off on that throttle and it's really struggling to come down because the breeze is coming through our garden from that direction and it will just lift it. Once it catches it, it will be gone. That's how you lose your quad in a few seconds. So keep them low, learn to fly, nice and reasonably close to yourself, you'll be okay. So I'll show you that emergency stop that we were talking about. Literally just press that button there. You just hold it for a, a second, it's quite good. It's not just an instant touch and it'll just drop out of the sky. It's a very lightweight quad, so it really shouldn't do any damage. And if it took a big impact on the arms, they would fold out of the way. So I actually quite enjoying this. <laughs> it's quite good. Oh, it's, you can hand launch as well. So if you don't want your, your uh, landing gear out like that. Oops, I've flicked it back into low rates. They just hand launch and hand catch as well. So that's low rate. Way, it's quite so hard to the wind caught it. Okay. So I'm going to show you. That's low rate, intermediate, high. Way. <laughs> it really does actually get quite a shift on in high. Nice! <laughs> it's actually got sort of a room to it as well. Not an awful lot of grunt or noise, but it's actually fun. Okay, I think I'll fly it with the Atlas, see how we get on with that, shall we? There we go. Okay, so Scotland being Scotland, <laughs> the rain's blown through, and now we've got terrific wind. We've actually got a storm coming in uh, tonight and tomorrow, so I'm hoping the camera won't pick up too much of the whistle noise. <laughs> Uh, and whether or not this will fly against it, I really don't know, so we will see. So we've got flashing LEDs, and because we haven't actually uh, turned the controls on here, once we turn the controls on here, the LEDs will stop flashing, that means we're bound and we're ready to fly. I'm going to pop on the altitude hold and then uh, we just need to launch. It'll just be interesting to see how it copes. Okay, so we're in 30%. The wind will probably muck up the altimeter, I expect it will. We're going to go up into 60%. Oh, it's still struggling. So here we come, 100%. It's going to, oh, it's going to have to be 100%. Oh, it's really struggling against that. That's fair enough, because it's actually quite good. It is windy. There's no argument against it. Up into 100 to a hey, it's coping. There we go. So that's pretty good. Oh, and it's at 12 o'clock there. <laughs> So uh, this way it should come really fast. <laughs> and this way it's going to struggle! <laughs> Who put that tree right in the way there? Ridiculous. <laughs> it's only been here a week. <laughs> there we go. Right, okay, interesting point happened there. Um, the legs bent out of the way, which was rather good, so, and nothing's damaged. I'm absolutely positive about that. But as soon as it had impact and it, it literally killed the motors, which is good. Oh, I think that's a, a good positive thing. Whether or not we're still good to go. Oh no, we're fine. So once it's come back down 
to land, it should be fine. There is an emergency stop on this if you got into a problem as well. And I'm just going to actually see whether this is one of those quads that cuts out when it's... Oops, and it's because I'm not... it's not level. Oh, you have to turn the stop button off once you've activated it, so that's interesting. Yeah, so as soon as we go up to about 90 degrees, the motors will kill, as you saw there, so... Well, it's still at 100%, so we should be able to fight the wind. And it's typical Scottish wind, it sort of gusts out and when it likes. Let's start the video. And the video is going to be exactly the same as we had before. And it's actually quite a quite controllable little app. And that if you're wondering why I didn't wait for a calm day, <laughs> I live in the Highlands of Scotland, so <laughs> you could wait a while for that. Uh, and the other thing is, you sometimes in environments where you've got to fly, whatever you, you know, if you want to fly, you're going to gonna have to give it a proper test sort of thing. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's part of the review, it's how the weather was. And it is actually coping fine. Yeah, it's working well. That is pretty good, actually. I'm quite impressed with this little thing. Whoa! <laughs> you can see how much struggle we got. And did you also see how much it's strained there once you actually get up high? The wind up the top there, those trees are 160 foot tall. Once you get up anywhere near there, it's going to really get a shift on. We can fly this on our gyro, so simply press that one. And there we go, we can, and it's not got a lot of pitch and roll on the gyro, I'm afraid. So let's put it to the right, it goes to the right. Left, yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, I'm tilting like that and it's really not got a lot going for it. So it's a very small on the gyro. We actually got to turn that off. And when we see how our normal roll is, it's a lot different sort of thing. Never had a gyro so soft as that actually. We've got headless mode on here as well. So again, we get flashing LEDs warned as it's in headless, so forward is away from me. It just depends what way you bound it, so that was the way I bound it back there. And there we go, so like I say, not, not really my sort of thing, the headless, but it's there if you want it. So let's just turn that off. And the FPV has worked reasonably well. You do get drop out with it, and you, you're expected as well. It's actually flying all right though. Way, whoop, whoop, there we go. And up and away. <laughs> uh, my hands are cold, so it might not be just the app's fault, but it, it's flying okay, actually. I've flown worse, and to be perfectly honest, I've flown better than this. So. There we go. See the wind just catching that and lifting it, even on the altitude hold, it was still, can still pulse up and down a wee bit. Just come here because I'm a little bit more protected from the house. You can see the where the pampas grass is going across there. I just wanted to give it a quick go on the flips, and then uh, that's been done, I think. While we're all still intact and nobody's fallen out and nothing's damaged. That's the way we actually like things. So press that button. There we go, and it flips as well. So you can flip it on here. <laughs> Not in very windy conditions though. There we go. I just thought I'd give it one quick go back on the transmitter and just sort of show you what the difference is. It's got a lot more control. This is in low rates and already it will fight the wind a lot better. So the app is nice and docile, nothing wrong with that, but just if you've got these conditions and they're up in high rates, no problem at all. We've got a lot more power with it. <laughs> hey, that's cool. <laughs> Actually quite fun flying in the wind, isn't it? I've done it a lot. <laughs> like I say, I live in Scotland, what were you expected? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good actually. I quite enjoy flying this thing. Nice. Okay, so what happens if the transmitter goes dead? Let's just try that one, shall we? I'm just going to turn that off. There we go. 1000, 1, 1000, 1, 1000, 1, 1006, 1000. Ooh, six seconds delay before it actually kills the motors. Now, where there's a problem with that is if it goes out of range, it could just fly for another six seconds, which it's not the fastest thing on the planet, so it wouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, we should be able to hand launch with a throw as well, which is good. Now, as I showed you before, it will uh, you can hand catch it as well. And this is the way I reckon you ought to learn to fly. Just, just don't bother with the camera or anything, just have a bit of fun with this. Learn to fly, hone your skills. 
because the actual flying bit's the real fun bit. <laughs> Way, oh, nice skid. <laughs> A bit of funnels as well. Not not hugely great. There we go. Now it's caught the wind. See what I mean? Look at the way that went there. Oh, just be real careful. Wait, here comes the wind again. Whoa, really difficult on the turn there because of the uh, the wind behind it. There we go. You can see the difference there, can't you? Against the wind, real struggle. Then come back with the wind. Way loads of bumps. Awesome stuff. <laughs> I would say I've had enough, but I really haven't. I could do this all day. <laughs> I don't know why I don't run a review channel. <laughs> so what did I think of it? Well, I would imagine you've already got the impression of what I think of it. It's awesome. I thought it was brilliant. It's around £30 at time of review. Uh, if I've got any codes or anything, I'll put them down in the description. I think one of them will already work. Uh, so give that a go. And if I find anything after I've done the review, I'll just keep posting them up there for you. Or check down in the comments as well. Uh, it's just awesome. I like the way it folded out. Uh, it's quite a quirky looking uh, quad, I must admit, but it, it did its job really nicely. Um, had a couple of impacts, as you saw, and they do get knocked back out of the way, though you are supposed to press the button uh, to release the arms, and you don't get that awful click sort of thing, but I don't think it would do any damage, to be honest. I like the landing gear, the way it folds right the way out of the way, and then uh, you can have it extended if you like. You could put a small camera in there uh, if you wanted better quality, uh, which wouldn't be a problem. I'm sure it could lift it. Uh, it wouldn't have any issues with a very lightweight sort of camera in there. It's not going to take a GoPro, and loads of people ask me, will it take a GoPro? Uh, uh, well, it certainly won't take the big sort of action cam ones. I would imagine this thing will probably lift about you know 40 grams, something like that. But you're not going to carry you know an 80 grand camera on it. It's, it's just too lightweight in itself, sort of thing. Uh, really good. I really enjoyed it, as you noticed throughout the uh, video. The app it flew well on the app and uh, was nice and controllable. The transmitter was really good. Uh, I can't say you sort of get a feel with it uh, because there's, there is no feedback or feel, but it, I, it was very controllable and in high rates, really good fun. It really got a roll, a rock and roll sort of thing. Pitch and roll was absolutely brilliant on it and I uh, really enjoyed it. And the way they've clearly marked everything uh, that you can use uh, on the uh, controls here as well. You also stop worked well, uh, just everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with it. Do good range. I mean, I had it way over 50 meters. Uh, and it would go further, I'm sure, without any problem at all. The other things you get with it, obviously, you've got your phone holder. You've got your little uh, Phillips screwdriver, which you need to take the uh, props apart. You just simply unscrew there uh, and then uh, replace the prop. You get a spare set of props and a spare set of screws, because <laughs> if you're anything like me, as soon as you undo that, it drops on the floor and it's disappeared. So uh, it's handy that you get another uh, set of props as well. And the actual charger for it is just a simple USB. So plug that into uh, a power bank if you're out and about or into your car or into a laptop or a computer or your mains adapter for your phone if it's a USB one and the actual battery itself like I say I'll put links down in description uh, I was getting nine minute flight out of this sort of quite consistently um, between eight and a half and nine minutes I think that's absolutely awesome for something like this for, for 30 quid I think it's very good indeed it takes about an hour to charge up uh, with the actual provided uh, charger there and I'll put a link down in the description where you can buy several batteries I think you get about four or five for 10 pounds and you get a multi charger which will charge all five of them up in about an hour as well so that would give you just loads of flying time uh, and I think with something like this you ought to get loads of flying time as well really good fun I enjoyed it uh, the camera is the quality of the camera is the quality of the camera it's a 30 pound quad and um, they're not professing it's anything special you know it's just uh, an ordinary 0.3 megapixel Ideally, if you just want to have a little bit of a selfie and a little bit of a play, but to be honest, just flying it without any of the uh, Wi-Fi FPV on it was really good fun on the transmitter. So sort of really good general buy, I think. Hey, it's Christmas. Go treat yourself. Mm -hmm.